At the edge of Ukraine, on the Crimean Peninsula, lies a holy mountain called Pachasarai. The mountains here overflow with a rich history. For the Tatars herding livestock on Crimea's vast plains, the lush land promises a cornucopia of blessings. Here in the stunning Khan's palace remains the Fountain of Tears. From harems of women secluded in love and lament, to the story of the Tatars settling in Crimea. The culture of the peninsula has blossomed over time. This is the third stage of our journey through Ukraine. Today, we'll head to the Black Sea. The coastal city of Kersonesis was founded by the ancient Greeks. Another nearby city is Sevastopol, with its long history of fierce battles. As Asia and Europe converge on the Black Sea, a synergy of new life flashes forth. This is where we will discover the hidden gem of Yalta. Ukraine is situated where Asia ends and Europe begins. Next to Russia, its surface area is the biggest in Europe, yet it's rarely a travel destination. But consider these, the Crimean War, the Yalta Conference, the Black Sea Fleet. These local events and assets have left a deep mark on world history. Symphoropol is the capital of the Autonomous Republic of Crimea. Like the Silk Road, it was a major hub of transportation. Our journey to Yalta begins here. Located at the southernmost tip of Crimea, Yalta is a port city on the Black Sea, famous for its tourist resorts. Here, unlike the city's suffocating hustle and bustle, the scenery here brings life a leisurely pace and sense of freedom. Having crossed the mountains and valleys of life's trials and tribulations, these old musicians seem at home playing their music in the streets of Yalta. To the hopeful youth, coming of age signals a stage of new beginnings and blessings. As such, Yalta hosts many weddings. This couple came from Kiev to get married here. Most Ukrainian youths wish to get married in Yalta. That same day, I was able to witness the nuptial celebrations of a couple native to Yalta. How romantic! I was expecting something grand, but these are all the guests they have, and I'm shocked at how unadorned the ceremony is. After signing the marriage papers, they hold up the certificate and take the photographs by which they'll remember this occasion. It was curious to see just the marriage officiant and no one else preside over the wedding. <laughs> she officially ends the ceremony. I also congratulated them.
Whether grand or simple in scale, Ukrainian weddings share one thing in common. A pigeon is released, but not just any pigeon. It has to be a white dove. These doves symbolize love, peace, and family unity. If these doves carry such meaning, why are they released and not kept? It made me wonder. But perhaps there's another way to look at it. Doves clutched in two hands can mean a love and happiness that always stay the same. While releasing them into the wide world might signify a love that can expand and grow to fill up all the empty spaces it finds. As we travel across the globe to meet people who lead different lives from ours, we face rich opportunities for self-reflection. <laughs> Moved by their heartfelt ceremony, I gave them their wedding gift on the spot. <laughs> the groom has turned a car from the Soviet era into their wedding carriage. These newlyweds spent $200 on their wedding. Whether the simplicity is deliberate or not, their friends celebrate them just as they are. Knowing that happiness is not only about wealth, Ukrainians also know how to have fun. Since the mountains block the cold northern winds before they reach Yalta, winter temperatures here do not fall below 4 degrees Celsius. People get to really relax at this time of year. Here is a historic summer resort built by Russian emperors. Originally a quiet retreat, Yalta became the focus of international attention. When it hosted the Yalta Conference, the conference took place at Levadia Palace. It was a favorite summer residence of the last Russian Tsar, Nicholas II. Post-Russian Revolution, the palace became a nursing home. It rose to fame at the end of World War II in February 1945. This is the conference room where the talks were held. Soviet Union General Secretary Stalin, American President Roosevelt, and British Prime Minister Churchill received unconditional surrender from Nazi Germany and discussed the future direction of the victors and losers of the war. In 
국가 세계, 세계 대표 국기가 걸려져 있고요. There was a clear reason the Yalta conference was held here. 개인적으로 건강이 안 좋았다고 해요. 그래서 어, 이쪽 그 스탈린 입장에선 미국에 굉장히 배려를 해서 어, 루즈벨트 대통령만 이렇게 이 궁에 머물러서 숙식을 할수 있도록 했고 어, 그 따로 회담을 할 때도 예를 들어서 출출은 나가서 회담을 하고 미팅을 했는데 루즈벨트만 이 성에서 움직이지 않고 여기서 다 해결할 수 있도록 편의를 굉장히 미우치게 제공해줬다고 하는데 바로 그래서 여기서 루즈벨트와 같이 For Roosevelt, who was in poor health, this palace in Yalta became a sanatorium. Locals call Yalta the city with healing powers. Could that be because of its mild climate? Right, it's really healing. It's just healing. It's just healing. Let's hear it. This is a spiritual guest. It's a form of reception. And then it's going to go on the territory of its corpus. Saki Sanitarium was originally conceived as a Russian resort in 1884, but the hemophilia-afflicted son of Nicholas II stayed there to receive treatment. It is a place whose use isn't limited to patients. For $50 a day, one can have three meals, sleep, enjoy the spa and massage facilities, and undergo mud therapy. With a variety of treatment programs available, many friends and family groups come here for two weeks at a time. All this space is not only for patients, it also serves as a family resort. People can also be treated in centers for dermatology, gynecology, urology, and orthopedics. 안에 전체 건물 전체에 그 유황 진흙이 있나 봐요. 그래서 그황 냄새가 전체 꽉차 있습니다. Along with that of the Dead Sea, Saki mud is one of two varieties of mud famous for their high vitamin mineral content. А сюда улучшается иммунитет, гинекологические проблемы решаются, также у мужчин бесплодие тоже. Улучшается все гормональный фон, то есть у мужчин улучшается гормональный фон, мужские гормоны тестостерон, у женщин наоборот женский фон эстрогены. I follow my guide, who is convinced that I need some sort of treatment. This spa uses purified water from the Black Sea. All my fatigue was melting away, but it was replaced with strong hydraulic pressure on every inch of my body. It hurts. At first it hurt, but then I got used to it and wanted to stay there longer. People flock here from faraway places. Также можно оздоравливаться, то есть приезжать к нам не уже с проблемой, а профилактические работы проводить. То есть можно приехать, опять же, получив такой комплекс на 12, на 14 дней, здесь находиться на таком оздоровлении. 
The stunning landscape alone is a sight for sore eyes. This is where a woman called Kura and her grandmother lived. I heard that they came to Yalta for treatment and ended up staying for three years. After coming to Yalta, the previously ill grandmother has grown healthy enough to work the fields. Kira greeted me warmly upon my sudden visit. <laughs> Kira is a quite famous painter who is working in Moscow. When her health worsened, she put her work on hiatus and came here instead. <laughs> Having regained her health and begun painting once more, for Kira, Yalta is indeed a letter from heaven. In Moscow, she painted very dark pictures, but in Yalta, her hues have become much brighter. Her subjects can also be found in everyday life. Я всю жизнь рисую, поэтому у меня оно постоянно присутствует. Я не выхожу из этого состояния. Поэтому я и здесь, потому что здесь вот такая природа, и здесь очень легко пишется, рисуется. И персонажи это уже здесь. Я три года здесь живу. In preparation for an exhibition in May, Kira has been immersed in last-minute touch-ups. At every moment of inspiration, she picked up her brush and painted enough to open a show in one year. Clear water, brilliant sunshine, the warm weather. Yalta could not be any more perfect for an artist. <laughs> Вот мое состояние крымское. В городе нет, особенно вот Москва, это очень тяжело. Для человека, который занимается творчеством, ну, может быть, кому-то было бы легче, кто занимается другими вещами. Just as she easily gets inspiration from her surroundings, her mind is clearer and free of clutter. Убегает. Is that doggy? That doggy? Kira has discovered kids in the area with extraordinary artistic talent, and she teaches them. I haven't met the children, but their bright, colorful, free forms of expression make it easy to imagine them. Then, all of a sudden, I wanted to express myself by painting. What would Yalta inspire me to paint? It's been so long since I took art classes at school, I decided to try a spot of decalcomania. I felt a little nervous. Ta-da! Looking at my finished artwork, I realized that I'd picked brighter colors than I usually would. Yalta's natural surroundings must have helped me in my choice. Dracon. No, it's a little 
I felt satisfied with my own work. I thought it was an excellent drawing, even if I say so myself. Unless it's the height of summer, nighttime in Yalta is relatively cold. The streets are full of people taking an after dinner stroll, hand in hand with their loved ones. With a gentle breeze blowing in off the Black Sea and romantic music playing in the background, this is a perfect way to unwind after a long day. Here is a site that can be seen on any seawall or quay around the Black Sea. There are, of course, fishermen hard at work. From herring to mackerel to pilkards, the Black Sea is home to a total of 108 species of fish, which makes fishing here especially exciting. I decided to give it a go myself. Not long after casting my line, I felt something heavy on the end. I was taken aback by the speed of my catch. The Black Sea is a landlocked body of water that forms borders with Russia, Turkey and Ukraine, and also manages to connect Europe with Asia. And while I'm here, I've been advised not to miss the Swallow's Nest Castle, which is where we're headed now. Even though it's landlocked, the Black Sea has a surface area four times out of Korea and a maximum depth of two kilometers, making it quite a considerable size, all told. Seeing the open sea for the first time in a while brings forth a song. I couldn't get over the sudden arrival of this school of dolphins. Directed by the lively dolphins, we reached our destination in no time. This castle perched precariously upon a cliff, overlooking the Cape of Ai Tador, makes an appearance in every good guidebook for the Crimean Peninsula. It is said that a wooden castle was built on top of this 40-meter high cliff in the 16th century. Then, in 1911, a German noble acquired it and within one year had replaced it with the Neo-Gothic castle we see today. Built in 1927, when a powerful earthquake hit, part of the Aurora Cliff tumbled into the sea. Fortunately, the castle was barely harmed. Now, we're headed to Sevastopol. 
Blocking the cold northern winds from reaching Yalta, the Crimean mountains are our friends on this journey. Sevastopol lies at the end of the Crimean mountain range, which reaches 1,500 meters in altitude and covers 150 kilometers from east to west. Sevastopol welcomes guests with a first impression somewhat different to the other resorts on the Black Sea. Formerly part of the Soviet Union, this historical town was Ukraine's battlefield during the Crimean War and World War II. Many a fierce conflict was fought here. It is almost as if the sound of cannon fire can still be heard even now. Traces of war are not far to seek in these naval port cities, which were built as fortresses from which to protect the Black Sea. This revolution carved yet another scar in a long history of tragedy. Sevastopol was a major battlefield during the Crimean War which was fought between Russia and other European empires for dominance over the Near East and the Balkans from 1853 to 1856. <laughs> This bell was made at the cost of thousands of people's lives. I dearly hope such bells won't ever be made again. The port looks peaceful nowadays, but there is still some tension among its residents. This is because of the Black Sea Fleet. There is a pier for ferries for Crimean residents, and at the other side of the pier, a cruise ship departs for tourists wishing to see the Black Sea Fleet. I was very excited and nervous to see the famous fleet. We can see that the sea is shared by Ukraine and Russia from the flags of both countries and their navies. We sailed for about 30 minutes to find the fleet. What? You can just explain to me. We are now going to travel to the Sevastopol Bucht. This is the largest bucht of our city. It divides the city into two parts. The south part and the southern part. Before, this bucht was called the Achtiar Bucht, as our city of Sevastopol, Achtiar. Это только через год после основания нашего города Екатерина II издала указ. When Ukraine achieved independence, there was some conflict over the issue of the Black Sea Fleet. But this was solved by the Soviet Union's offer of a long-term lease agreement for the sea. Lying as it does between several European and Asian nations, the Black Sea has been a site of strategic importance for each of them, which is a reason for the wars that occurred here. But rather than a grenade, the people of Ukraine sing of the sea as being a star fallen from heaven.
Having become acquainted with a few of the sites of the Black Sea, it was quite a surprise to discover something altogether different. Today, only ruins remain, but this place was once the home of the Greek city of Chersonesus. But how did a Greek city come to leave its remains on Ukrainian soil? The story goes that a crew of Greek sailors lost their way while out at sea, but followed a dim light they could see shining in the distance. That light led them right here, where they set up home on the coast in 600 BC. Are there still Greek women living here today? This woman is a model, but instead of going all the way to Greece, she and her team have managed to create the feeling of an ancient temple through her clothes and laurel headdress. Can I try it? Okay. Thank you. Will I look like a goddess too? If I try on the laurels? Ah, 정말 이게 황금 월계산처럼 금가루가 막 떨어지고 있어요, 실제. 예전에는 이렇게 그리스 여성들이 휘날리는 시폰 같은 옷을 입고 이런 걸 쓰고 흑해를 바라다 보면서 사랑하는 사람을 기다렸을까요? For how many millions of years have the waves of the Black Sea lapped the Ukrainian shores? If the Creator were to look down on humanity and see the way we bicker and squabble, for him, it would all be over in the blink of an eye. We have heard from the people, the environment, and the battlegrounds of painful history that make up this place called Yalta. They are telling us to move forward in love, looking after ourselves and each other. <laughs>